That's very funny. Too soon. <laughs> Too soon. <laughs> All right. Timestamp. Yep, I already got it. Moving on to Stuttering John. Uh, Stuttering John's had a rough go. So, Cardiff, you might have some insight here as you're... I could kind of actually consider you the mayor of the Dabbleverse as opposed to this Carl character. Buttering up that potato. I did right. win the Lifetime Achievement Award at DabbleCon, but... That's what I'm saying. That's, that's how I that's, look at it, but... Yeah. Uh, so you may, may, may be able to shine some light on this because uh, DG was up to no good. I'm mm -hmm. curious your take mm -hmm. on this. Um, we'll get into it, but first, we start with something... Uh, from Stuttering John's show the other day that he does a lot. It's stunning to me. There's 162 baseball games a year. And it's stunning to me. 163 how... in a leap year. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> sure. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's I stunning laugh. to me how much <laughs> this grown man's life revolves around every single one of them. Oh, I know. Um, this is Yankees. Yeah, so this is... Uh, it's weird, like... Every time he's talking to Carl, he's like, I got to be done by seven. The Yankees are on tonight. It's like your life revolves around that that much that, that you you can't do anything at night because the fucking Yankees are on. And he also, uh, I guess he was planning with Vinny to play comedy at the Carlson. And Vinny was trying to book him on a Sunday in December. And Stuttery John was like, you know, I just don't know if I can do that because I'm a big Giants fan. And it's like, if the Giants are on that day, I'm not even going to want to be there. Like, well, what if they're playing you, Monday Night Football that week? That's, that's how you operate your career, John? What are you talking about? Makes sense, actually. <laughs> Doesn't he have a VCR? Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right? I'm, All right, let's hear him talk, talk about the Yankees. Oh, hi, Mom. Oh, yeah, I, don't, I, just, I forgot the Yankees were even on. This is not going to be a very long show, though. But Ma, tell me the score, okay? Thanks. I didn't even. Uh... Hold on. Wait. Pause it. <laughs> now I've been I've been out of the John business for a while. I've, I'm a friend of John now. I understand. I'm one of his greatest co-hosts. Maybe be back next week. Yes. But do you think that super chat from his mom was almost like? Do you think the Yankee games is something they've been working on in therapy for years? Like that's his. <laughs> that's his that's what keeps him from getting into trouble John, the Yankees like are on watch. you should be you yeah. have an appointment at seven <laughs> you have to watch every Yankees game because if he watches every Yankees game that's less that's 162 games two and a half hours each where he's not getting in trouble <laughs> but the problem he, is he gets shit faced during home. every game <laughs> but she knows he's safe at home he's not <laughs> he's not out drunk driving that's weird how much the way he talks to his mom, I think, is so telling of a just a, a, the greater personality, where he talks to his mom the way kind of a, a a mama's boy child does, where he's like, "Yeah, ma, you know, let me know the Yankee score, okay? That's that's your job today, mom, who's in her eighties and watching me on YouTube for some reason." I would hate and a grilled cheese sandwich. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my mom was watching. I'd be very upset. <laughs> I didn't even uh, check it. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> the Uz, I don't know if you've noticed this, Cardiff. The Uz are coming back. I know you're a big fan of those, and they're they're uh, they were gone for a little while, but they're making a comeback. They are. They are. It, it, the the co-host having a co-host on screen with him really eliminates, really knocks down some of the Uz. Yeah. But him on screen solo. They definitely come back. Well, we're going to find out. Cardiff may have to step in as co-host because his buddy has betrayed him, but yes. I'm not sure if we're getting into that yet. Uh, <laughs> so <laughs> let me address everything that happened yesterday. I admit the show was the, a debacle from the get-go. And here's why it wasn't my fault. <laughs> and I'll tell you why. Uh, and it's it's really sad to me. I was trying to do a show to tribute an old friend of mine, one of the greatest comic minds of all time, Sam Kinison. That's the first. Ma, can you make me a grilled cheese? <laughs> <laughs> Sam yeah. was a... oh, can I, I say something about this tribute? It's as much of a tribute as any episode of Why Are You Laughing or this show. It's a tribute. 
<laughs> so basically what John was doing is playing clips of Sam Kinison on Stern. And in this episode of his show, he is twisted into, I was memorial memorializing my friend that passed away. <laughs> John, you were like, watch Kinison and Howard. They're, they're pretty funny together. <laughs> well, you, did see tribute. With the, you did see with Sam's brother, right? Yeah, so I heard that was disastrous and his audio didn't work, essentially, right? Yes. And so that's what he's getting into here is his, his tribute with Bill Kinison. Greatest comic minds of all time, Sam Kinison. And Sam was a celebrity that uh, took me under his wing, treated me <laughs> yeah, like right. an equal. It as seems, Bill said, doesn't see me listen very much. No. <laughs> You don't hear John when he's like, oh, oh, Trump, get him out of office. That's what those eyes are. He just feel he can't commit. So it just comes out like that. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> if you slow Sam Kinison down, like 0. 0.8, <laughs> 0. 0.75, that's, that's John. <laughs> really touched me when he said, John, Sam loved you. And even to hear Bill. You say Sam loved Jews? <laughs> so there's a story we did an episode about sam kinnison for why you laughing go check it out and uh, we talked about how sam died in a, a car accident and um had sort of like an out-of-body experience uh carl god damn it what was his friend carl Lebeau was with him and said you know sam he took sam in his arms and sam was having a conversation and then at a certain point we carl realized Sam wasn't talking to him. It seemed like he was talking to God. But what a lot of people don't know is Sam was talking to John in that instance. <laughs> and then he drifted off into heaven. <laughs> He's like, John, I am transferring my spirit onto you. I am your mentor. <laughs> so I assume they just got drunk a couple of times in the early 90s. Is that essentially <laughs> the grounds of this mentorship? <laughs> he had a cocaine plug. Because <laughs> I think... I think I want to say Sam was dead and gone before John started doing stand up. That's what I want oh, to think. Way before he started doing stand up. Yeah. Way before. But like Stuttering John had only been on the Stern show four or five years before Kinnison died. So it's not like he was a, a staple of the show where yeah, Kinnison would go in and there and like, yet. Yeah, yeah, I need to take this kid out. I'd take him under my wing. It touched me. It really did. I. I was holding back tears, to be honest with you. Chugs. <laughs> Is that a Red Bull? And my mom knows how sensitive I am. That or an Ultra? I am, uh, you know, I'm a sensitive guy. I'm so sensitive, in fact, that when only 30 years have passed after a drug addict's death, <laughs> I get teary-eyed. <laughs> He he mentored him too, and like not not in his heyday. It was when everyone was like, "All right, we've had enough of you, Sam." Oh, Sam, how could you leave? It's only been three decades that I've had to get over this. How could you leave us so soon? <laughs> uh, next, we have uh, the him talking about the tribute show. Yeah, so this was a, a real debacle, and he's going to explain why none of it is on him. Ten minutes in, that Dave and I are alone. <laughs> There's the cadence that Sam gave him. Did you hear that? <laughs> oh, hold on. Ten minutes in, that Dave and I are alone. <gasps> he says he's got to go, and he texts me why his brother was stuck. And oh, so this I, Dave I, that he's talking about, by the way, uh, you also may know him as DG. I have called him Podcast Poison, in the sense that he says nothing and honestly takes so long to say it <laughs> he, he is a net negative on a podcast he's taking away he's actually making stuttering john less interesting when he's on there he was terrible on the podcast but everyone says he that dg was trolling john do you believe that to be the case cardiff i don't even mean with this episode that john's talking about i just mean in general no oh, yes in general there's no is everything about him with john seemed a little disingenuous right but i still don't know to what degree like what what was the end game what was the goal yeah if he DG? was trolling if the end him, game was that stupid video that he played swinging a lot of work for nothing <laughs> yeah that's the thing is like 
may I was always kind of like maybe he's trolling him, but to what end? What what's being accomplished here? Because he's just agreeing with John and adding nothing to the show. It's not like you know when um, that douchebag uh, the Vin- Vince the lawyer was John's co-host. Like he was trolling him, but kind of made it interesting because he would ask John questions that made John uncomfortable. DG was just taking up space. <laughs> I don't get what the point was. Well, I think DG did. I mean, I took a similar approach to John. I did exactly what DG did for about a year, but I did it on Twitter. Right. So I was just trying to build that trust, build that relationship on Twitter. Sure. Not on his show <laughs> for some reason. I, I think you're very, I think you are who John should be doing a show with. Because it's I, not I as, it's not as confrontational. Like when Carl's on, he's just going to get loud and confrontational or trying to avoid him and read super chats. With you, he will go back and forth with a little bit, but you'll, you'll massage him in, in directions he needs to go. Take, uh, oh. take liberties with why you're laughing, though. I did notice that. Yeah, I didn't oh, care for your stinks. review of why you're laughing. That was a little harsh. So stinks. <laughs> <laughs> Five seconds later, it's his favorite show. He though. admitted he liked the Abbott and Costello episode. Oh, yeah, that one was great. You guys did a fantastic job. <laughs> hey, thanks. <laughs> I love black and white comedy. That's the one I'm most proud of. <laughs> very loyal to his brother and that's admirable but he said keep that's admiral that's admirable but that bill kinnison isn't to this day burying sam posthumously <laughs> what an admi- admirable quality no wasn't he talking about dg at that point uh go back a little bit no he said his brother i thought yeah dg's brother oh oh you know what you oh. might be right yeah you're you're right i'm sorry and that's admirable oh, i didn't go back far enough and he texts me why his brother was stuck. And I, I get it. Dave is very loyal to his brother. Yeah. And that's admirable. But he said, keep keep me in the room so you could play the all the videos that I compile. Can okay, I keep in mind, and this is the most important part of this whole series of events, <laughs> is this was about Sam Kennison. Wasn't about me. Wasn't about Dave. Debatable. Wasn't about any, any of you. It was about Sam Kinison. This is what Sam would have wanted. <laughs> uh, super chat from Nick West. Two bucks. Mike's gay. LOL. Whoa! I don't put up with that kind of talk. Pardon. Why are you laughing? <laughs> Why the LOL? I don't. Not funny. This one's stuck on the screen. I can't quite get it off. That I'm gay? Yeah. It's not true, guys. <laughs> Stop saying it. Uh, next clip is the audacity of Dave. I mean, this is where Dave has really gone too far. But by the way, I should set up a little better. In case people Probably. don't know, uh, all of the inner workings of the Dabbleverse is uh, basically um, DG sent john a bunch of videos and he was like looking around on this he wasn't fully paying attention on this episode and then had to leave to tend to his brother um and then one of the videos he played i guess dave edited in something with shuli and the uncle rico guys yes and i guess dave was trying to be funny or he was trolling john or something now again when you come to when, when you talk about sensitivity and these guys just like fucking let your hair down lighten up a little bit if Hackride did that to us, if Hackride sent me a video, in fact, he has without even telling me, if he puts things in videos that I'm not aware of, Still does. Uh, I might say like, hey. Does it, technically, isn't every video a video you're unaware of? Yes, that's exactly right. I have no idea what's in these videos. So sometimes I might say I Hackride. Like, every video, like if you were to walk through uh, Netflix <laughs> right now, wouldn't you be unaware of We got one? it. I can't see. We got the oh, joke. Okay. I'm in the- I'm mid rant here. You, you have trouble <laughs> reading a room. I've heard. <laughs> that's, a, that's a good point. I haven't thought of it that way. I hear about it the next few days. But I might say to Hack Ride, like, "Hey, in the future, don't do that." Just because I it, it's fucking up the flow of the show or something. Yeah, I won't interrupt you anymore. I promise. <laughs> Thank you. <That's laughs> Thank <it>. you. <laughs> but, but my point is, like, if I went on the show and was like, "This is just," I mean, this is a, a betrayal of. Epic purport. Hack ride. I don't understand how you could do this to me. It's like, wh- why are you so angry about it, John? It's not that big a deal. If you just let your hair down, 
people wouldn't fuck with you as much. The reason you're getting fucked with is because of reactions like this. When someone does something minor, you know, fucks with a video and gets you to play it, or changes their name in the chat to something wacky, rather than laughing it off, you get indignant and fucking rant about it for 40 minutes. It's crazy that you behave like this and haven't learned that's the cause of your issues. Uh, yes. Back to, back to the tape. <laughs> I thought he was going to interrupt you. I was waiting on it. <laughs> uh, the audacity of Dave. Yes, here we yes, go. please. Because what the fuck? <clears throat> when I'm doing a tribute to one of the greatest comedians of all time, and someone who I was... Again, John, this is not the Kennedy Center honors. <laughs> you, were, you found a clip from Howard Stern and you were going to play it and be like, isn't Sam funny? <laughs> but I would love and to see... I'm sure there's clips somewhere of Howard like memorializing some celebrity that died yep. and John runs in with some you know some story or something You ever seen did. the movie Swordfish Howard? I was just going to say listen to the the Howard on 911 episode of why you laughing we just did there's plenty. <laughs> A lot of people sure. died that day and John wasn't too concerned. He's talking about, about boobs and shit. Like that was his concern. <laughs> As a plane is hitting another tower, <laughs> you've seen swordfish. With friends with his wife, friends with Sabrina, friends with Bill and Sherry. I got a lot of friends. The fuck would he destroy that with a hacky video inside a Sam montage? <laughs> get there and I was morphing into Florentine I didn't know what to say I was blindsided and I reacted in the fashion that one would react that just got blindsided to bring up 9-11 again he's reacting to this like it was done during a tribute for 9-11 on 9-12 <laughs> like, like you weren't taking it seriously enough Sam, Sam's only been dead. The body's not even cold. It's only been 30 years, Dave. Take it a little more seriously, will you? Uh, corn diff two bucks. Hit the like button. Corn and thumbs up emojis and beers. Yes, please smash the like button. Smash the subscribe. Tap the notification bell. All that good stuff. And go subscribe to Cardiff Electric's YouTube as well, will you? Please. <laughs> please. Uh, Dave was booted. Uh, his next clip. Yeah, so he talks about why he kicked Dave off and why, you know, they're still friends, but he's a persona non grata. Because then he texts me, super unnecessary, John, and insulting. I'm the unnecessary one? I'm the insulting one? You're definitely the unnecessary one. I definitely won't be bothering <laughs> you anymore. What the fuck did I do? That should be tattooed on John's forehead. <laughs> I've never done nothing wrong. <laughs> Do me a favor, keep my info private, which I always would. He's already given Unless I accidentally give it away. <laughs> which he did. <laughs> I love, Cardiff, can I tell you, I love every time you point out the exact reason you will not give him your real name. <laughs> <laughs> but you know he's given out DG's name in an episode, right? Of course, yes, he gives... Oh, okay. well, Full name. He keeps doing this thing with... He keeps saying Carl's real name. Yes. And he's like, oh, uh, I'm not doxing you, by the way. It's on your LinkedIn page. And he <laughs> keeps using this as the argument. So essentially what he's saying is like, yeah, if you already know Carl's name, you can easily find it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> if you know the code to enter his house is 4736, <laughs> then you would know how to get into his house. So it's, not it's on it's on his birth certificate. It's everywhere. <laughs> yes. The last four digits of his social security. Who cares that it's 9723? Yeah, if you work for social security, you could already find that if you wanted to. So it'd be very funny if those were the real numbers Cardiff's giving out as a joke. <laughs> it would be, wouldn't it? <laughs> And then he Ooh. promises me he's not going to do any other shows, that, that, you know, and, he, and I have his word. We'll see if that stands. And I wrote back what you did was unnecessary. Don't put this on me. Oh, 
Oh, that's good. John got across the bridge and he said, oh, Jesus, there's not a trail of lighter fluid behind me like there usually is. Let me make sure I light this one ablaze. <laughs> um, next, we have uh, slow realization. <laughs> well, I just like that, like, it, this is every relationship John has where DG is an incredibly boring guy. And I'm sure he was trolling John, but seems relatively harmless. And yet John still, with even with this type of guy, is like, oh, no, you don't. This is your fault, and don't you forget it. Sorry, Mike, <laughs> I have to interrupt. Please. Breaking news. Go uh oh ahead. Hacksaw Jim Duggan is okay. Oh, thank God. I didn't know he was in peril at all. Yeah, so he's fine. <laughs> he's resting comfortably at home. Okay, we don't have to do a tribute show for him yet. That's good. To be, no, fair, to be fair, though, you could say that at any moment. I feel like he's been dying for 20 years. <laughs> oh, <laughs> the best. I'll go for that kind of humor here. <laughs> I do. <laughs> and then, you know, after the show, I called Dave and I say, what the fuck was that? And, and, uh, and he goes, he goes, hey, you know, I, I was trying to be funny. I just learned how to edit. And I thought it would be funny, you know, to put those idiots in there. And, you know, that's why I did it. And DG uh, thinking he was funny was the wrong instinct. That's where I will correct him and say, swing and a miss, Dave. <laughs> you know, and I s explained to him, I go, Dave, come on, man. I go, you didn't tell me. I go, if you told me, then the joke could be, with me that i'm part that i'm with you and you know and and your joke <laughs> but by blind side, i see things the way they are and you see things wait a minute how do you see things yeah, when you put a tag on a video like that the, you always want the other person to know that the tag is coming before you tag the joke i'm waiting for him to start breaking down comedy and, by, and a tag it's just like it, it's a tag it's a tag is what it is <laughs> But by blindsiding me, okay. then I'm just, then I'm the joke. Like, you're just, you're letting me, <laughs> like, it's, you didn't include me. He what wanted, you, here's the thing. Here's the thing about Johnny's like, he wanted to say he's the joke. And by the time he got it out, he was like, I can't admit that. I got to retreat here. <laughs> my reaction to be this whole time. How many of you chatters have been saying he's a troll? Now you all feel vindicated. Because he was. Maybe he just vindicated all of these guys. Yes. By doing because that. he was being himself. <laughs> when I'm trying to tribute my good friends. My good we friends. were resurrecting Sam Kinison. What don't you understand about that? He would be alive today if DG <laughs> didn't do that. <laughs> they, they, were doing the, they were in the middle of the seance, and DG had to play his wacky games. Now, unfortunately, Sam Kinison is stuck in the body of a of a doll running around in Manhattan. It went wrong. I could have had another one of his brilliant rants if it wasn't for DG. Bastard. Uh, here we have him explaining the tweet. So this is where I thought things got a little nuts. Where this is like, you know, hey, you messed up. You're the CEO of a company. You got to own this. This is a DG is in a in a big important spot, and public relations is crucial when you are a man of DG's stature. And it's amazing that he doesn't know that. So yesterday at five fifty four p.m. This is now which time zone? Five hours <laughs> after the whole thing, and I wrote no tweet. I figure. He wrote, John, I've been busy all day. What a bitchy. Imagine being friends with this guy. He is such a girl. <laughs> was this what, a a passive-aggressive bitch. What was the tweet he wanted him to send? So he, I Dave think. wanted, or I'm sorry, John wanted Dave to tweet out, hey, by the way, all I know is that his name is Dave, and he sometimes go by, goes by DG. I have no fucking idea how to find him on Twitter. <laughs> so I don't know how many followers he has. But John thought it was crucial that Dave sent out a tweet to uh, all of his followers and say, guys, I wasn't trolling John. I made an error in judgment. 
um, you know, I, I edited a video in a way that I thought was funny, but it turns out it was not. He wanted him to be a, be a man and take ownership for uh, his hijinks. And John thought that was the, the best public relations move. I don't know why he thinks that matters, like what that would change. But he really wanted him to tweet this out. We, what we discussed, I'm still out and about and I'm meeting my girl at seven. So it might be after that. So in other words, everything in your world is more important than, me. than what just transpired with me. Yes, of course. Every- yes. If it wasn't, I would, I would question his character highly. Yeah. Oh, so your life to you is more important than my life is to me. (laughs) And I'll say this. A tweet takes literally one minute out of your life. You type slow. One minute. Yeah. Well, that's good. He wants to make sure Dave did it in haste. That's good. (laughs) Put no, don't put any thought into it, Dave. Just fucking throw something out there. As he pushes the gun to the back of his head, (laughs) it sends. He's paused. This is but still. But he wild. doesn't tweet <laughs> anything for five hours and says it's going to be after seven, after he sees his girl. Man, I really feel important, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> this is like in John's mind. The nation waits for Biden to make a statement after a disaster. <laughs> like we're all like, "What's Dave going to do? <laughs> uh, How's he going to calm the people?" Indian bra, five bucks. Don't. This is a John quote. Don't blame me. Blame Carl's parents. They doxed him when he was born. They put <laughs> info on the birth certificate. They told. First thing they did was tell that nurse his name. <laughs> <laughs> first thing. Uh, this is the last clip from this uh, um, show. This section of John. This section of John. Yeah. So I I just love that he's literally like John does this all the time, but now he's literally saying like. How come I'm not more important to you? <laughs> like, that's kind of sad to watch where really just John just wants... With Cardiff, he said this to you before, where he wants to be your friend. He wants to be Carl's friend. Like, John is desperate for friendship. And really, the insult to injury <laughs> is... I'm injured. <laughs> My leg hurts. That... He didn't even tweet what he said he was going to do. You would think. Get He's the fuck it. over it. Oh, my God. Had any sense of urgency after he saw how angry I was. Because I, I called him. And I'm like, Dave, are you fucking kidding me? I was livid. Man, I wasn't screaming. Because I'm not going to fucking scream at the guy. Do you think Cosby's what? victims would have found solace if they were like, well, at least he tweeted about the issue? Like. <laughs> Everything's kind of forgiven now. He did tweet an apology out. I'm going to be looking. That's all they were asking for. (laughs) (laughs) He would have been free the next minute. I'm going to be be scrutinizing Cardiff's Twitter today. He better have something nice to say about us. Oh, yeah, yeah. Where's the... By 1 o'clock, we better see a tweet, Cardiff. Yeah, before kickoff. Just just for the record, I've been... This entire time, I've been hunting for DG on Twitter. I have no idea where to find him. (laughs) You can't, you couldn't, his name is Dave or DG. You couldn't find that <laughs> if I paid you to. That's a very, really uncommon name there. <laughs> but I was like, dude, dude. Dude. And then he doesn't, and then he tells me he's not going to tweet it out until maybe eight hours after the fact. <laughs> I like that in John's mind, he can't stomach the idea that somewhere in this world, let's say Carlos Danger is walking around thinking like, I guess Dave's not sorry. <laughs> I haven't seen him tweet anything. I guess he's not sorry at all. Now, now <laughs> the gives irony a fuck? here, the irony here is, is DG is a Twitter genius. Yes. And he is actually, he, he's done all the research. He knows the peak time to tweet this out. So it hits the algorithm just right. <laughs> That's it's right. It's, ride that, a wave. it's that wave thing just doesn't stop. <laughs> At Maximum Elon exposure. Musk. <laughs> <laughs> he knows all the hashtags. Yeah. When he could have just tweeted it out after we got off the phone. Think about it, folks. Isn't that proof that he really don't do? He has no respect for me. Yeah, no one does. I mean, like yeah. Didn't you know that, buddy? Vinny's oh. phone must have blown up this week. 
<laughs> oh, I'm so, John, I'm so sorry. No, none of us respect you. You didn't know that? <laughs> I thought we made that pretty clear. Speak for yourself. <laughs> Carter <laughs> respects him. Any respect, any remorse, he would have tweeted it out immediately. That's what I would have done. Yeah, right. Yes. Yeah, that's what John would have done is take full ownership of his mistakes. Hey, where's that hundy you owe me? <laughs> <laughs> and again, you can't assume that anyone's going to act the way you're acting. Uh -huh. <laughs> you can't assume that everyone's going to be as magnanimous as me, John Melendez. <laughs> uh, known for owning up to my mistakes. They call me Mr. Apology, John Melendez. <laughs> yeah, he's a, he's a man of character and principle. <laughs> All right, so we're getting to uh, his, 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 big, uh, his big speech. From Reddit, yeah. Yeah, so this is from, uh, I, I took this from Dabblers Anonymous, but there's a longer, he did an episode yesterday, there's a lot more of this, but I thought uh, the boys at Reddit picked the, the, the perfect length of time for us to play, where this is like straight out of a movie. Cardiff, in your wisdom, yes, is this a, is this a bit, is it acting, what do you think this is? I've, I've watched this a few times now, and again, <laughs> yeah, I, got, yeah. I got fooled, I got bamboozled by the... Uh, <laughs> Oh, you know, the, the, the lighting that he used after the Carl interview. Again, I had to go live immediately after that. I thought he, John was in distress. Yes. So I don't know. I, I think I'm too close. This is, like, this is why police officers can't investigate crimes in their own family. Right. Of <laughs> they're course. too close to the issue. <laughs> I, I, don't know if yeah. I don't know if I can be objective enough to determine what this is. You've been suckered sure. by his authenticity. I, I get have. it. I have. <laughs> Let me let you in on something. Please. I'm one man. <laughs> I mean, already. Already this is movie poster stuff. <laughs> I, I paused it as he's wiping his nose. <laughs> For the record, what a though, leader. Everything, everything he said has been factual so far. That's true. <laughs> That's, <laughs> you're not wrong. He's one man. Yes. Let me let you in on something. I'm one man who's a school teacher was who changed kids lives for the better <laughs> have you spotted any lies yet cardiff <laughs> no <laughs> all i know is any 57 year old man who did something for about six months would be it would be life-changing for them that that would be their entire life's purpose yeah. well i i remember I don't even remember who my regular teachers were. I just remember the substitutes when I was in high school because they were the real life changers. Well, to be honest, I, I do remember a lot of the substitutes. <laughs> I remember them more than my regular teachers, to be honest. Well, John, John, John goes later. It's not part of this, but he talks about, and he t he's talked about this a lot, how he would walk down the halls and the way he describes it, it's like paparazzi. It's like TMZ is after him. Mr. Melendez, Mr. Melendez, you're our favorite teacher. Has anyone in any school, in any nation, ever done that to a teacher? <laughs> uh, I'm just going to read. There's a couple um, super chats here that have to do with what we just watched. So before okay. we get too far away. Uh, Nimrod, five bucks. John sounds like a psycho stalker ex-girlfriend. Why, <laughs> why is everything in your life more important than me? <laughs> yeah. That was that was like creepy to be like, I think I have so much control over you that my, your life should revolve around pleasing me. <laughs> uh, Dang Lizard, five euros to summarize. Stuttering John wanted DG to put out a statement of public apology for his comedy or get canceled. Hashtag hypocrisy, police. <laughs> See, <laughs> for the record, hold on. I have breaking news. I have found DG's Twitter. OK, Ooh. what everybody needs to do if they want to find DG on Twitter is go into your DMs and look for a DM from Kinky Loco who sends you DG's Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> so Kinky Loco, if you could send that Twitter to everyone. So yeah, that find we everyone find... watching <laughs> if you could. Please, I'll, I'll take it. Yes, John um, was very upset that his 45 followers did not get the tweets. <laughs> <laughs> a nation waits for DG to tweet. <laughs> Uh, American Cupcake, five bucks. Uh, I retweeted your son's band. A tweet takes a minute. It means nothing, stuttering John. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a good point. I dare say that's hypocrisy. That he, he his big favor, he's like, real, after, to uh, Bob Levy, he's like, really, Bob, after all I've done for you, 
after I retweeted your son's band. And then as this guy pointed out, great point, that he's like, it's meaningless. A tweet is meaningless. Just fucking do it. Who cares? Uh, Josh Nimeroff, 10 bucks, no comment. And oh, American you. American Cupcake, oh, 2 bucks. Is. is that real? That's it, yeah. Okay, uh, his handle is at uh, Consulieri DG. <laughs> <laughs> it's even a cornball in his fucking Twitter handle. <laughs> Oh, go less, follow go follow DG so you can see his statement. It's less up. effective than at Cardiff Elect <laughs> on Twitter. <laughs> Don't put the whole Cardiff Electric, just Cardiff Elect. You pop up while we're typing. Yeah. I've received a myriad of cards <laughs> and emails and texts. I'm sorry. Can we go back? Because I, I, we need to feel the full effect. I'm going to let this play through because <laughs> you have to really experience this. It's, it's a, it's a movie speech that he's giving. It's exactly right. Let me let you in on something. Hackride's already following DG. Apparently, I'm one man <laughs> who's a school teacher who changed kids' lives for the better. I've received a myriad of cards and emails We've seen and texts. Why do they have your number? From parents and students <laughs> thanking me. Hello? He's choked up. Get it together, John. Let him have the his life for the better. <laughs> Hold! I have three loving kids mm. who I would love unconditionally. Would. I this would is what the Yankee mother. game is supposed to prevent from happening. <laughs> <laughs> I, missed, I missed the Yankees game for this. <laughs> loving family. Can I just say, though, I think my, my main issue with this is like, hey, if you get emotional talking about this stuff, you know, more power to you. That's that's uh, masculine of you to be that vulnerable on, on a podcast, I suppose. <laughs> but uh, the issue that I have is I think it's totally phony <laughs> because the day before this, he'll be screaming at people. So what's the real John? Are you a beaten man who's on the verge of tears? Or are you the guy who doesn't care and is, you know, playing whack-a-mole with the trolls and beating them down? Like, which is it, John? You can't be the tough guy and this soft, sensitive, uh, choked up type. Uh, Nimrod, five bucks. Norm MacDonald quote. They say that the, <laughs> that the teachers are the real heroes. But you know who are the real heroes? The real heroes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the teachers. Yeah. <laughs> yes, exactly. Uh, Dang Lizard, five euros. In my school, substitute teachers were trolled until they ran out crying so we could get the class off. That's kind of how I remember it as now, well. Here's why I do believe students loved John. Because they were like, oh, Mr. Melendez is in. He's going to be hungover, and we're not going to have to do any work. And we know more than him. <laughs> Yay. Yeah, and we can outsmart this fucking idiot. <laughs> so, I've yes, I do believe the kids liked him. I don't know how many lives he changed, though. I've literally stapled the dress of a substitute teacher with a bulletin board. So <laughs> I enjoyed when the substitute oh. teachers walked into class. <laughs> me too. Cardiff's been trolling since he was just a boy. <laughs> yes. The classic kick me sign. <laughs> Spitball time. I have a loving mother, loving family. <laughs> this is tough. And I don't deserve it. This is based on nothing, by the way. This is a response to nothing new that has happened. But can you, can you replay that and just yeah. listen to that segment? I have a loving mother, loving family. And I don't deserve it. Pause. Pause. Is that what he doesn't deserve? <laughs> <laughs> or is it the treatment? Because I'm not sure. Yeah, I couldn't tell either, to be honest with you. But, but I don't understand. Like, now John's a victim. And this is, again... He's doing this tearful rant, but like nothing has changed. I don't know why all of a sudden he's crying about it when a week ago he decided not to teach because he was having so much fun taking down the trolls. What's the real John, Cardiff? I don't 
don't know. I'm uh, going to get to the bottom of it, though. Nick West. <laughs> Nick point. West, two bucks. Uh, no, for real, Mike's gay. <laughs> hey, knock, knock it off. I said nah. -uh. <laughs> All right. Cardiff, it's still thank playing. you for... Oh, it's still playing. going? Yes. Jesus Christ. We haven't seen the fruit yet. I was just doing a political show. That's it. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> Now it's over. He's not paused again. Oh, I'm just a man in his politics. And I was <laughs> taken down. <laughs> Did I take advantage of the army major? Yeah. So I don't know. I, th I think it's phony. I think John's doing an act for sympathy. Like the same when we, we cried about his kids. John thinks like we're making fun of him for crying. But at least I'm sure some people are. But me, I'm making fun of you because I think it's a complete act. I think you're being a phony. And you're trying to get people on your side. You haven't figured out... How you want to take Carl and Shuli down so badly, but you haven't figured out a good approach because everyone that's watching you is there to laugh at you, not them. So you haven't figured out how to rally people, and you're trying everything. You're trying the tough guy act. You're trying the I'm going to sue you act. And now you've resorted to crying and trying to drum up sympathy, and you don't understand why that's not working either. That's my main issue with John. I'm gonna get. I'm gonna start working with John this week. We're gonna start working on his one-man show Please. that we will have touring the world, the world, blue state, red state. <laughs> I imagine the the room the room is completely black, and then a spotlight shines on John, and he just says, "Sam Kinison," and then the tribute begins. <laughs> just John in a rocking chair with one light, maybe a pipe. Oh, I'm serious. Uh, this is gonna happen. <laughs> I, I hope you're right. I want it to very badly. <laughs> the one man show. Yeah. All right. Cardiff, thank you for joining us, buddy. Tell the people once more where they can find you. Uh, Patreon.com slash Cardiff Electric and uh, YouTube.com at Cardiff Electric. Yeah. And apparently Kevin Brennan has been laughing at his Patreon. So, so go, go subscribe, guys. Get yes. those numbers every, up for Cardiff. Every time, every time uh, Kevin Brennan tweets out a picture of my dismal Patreon numbers that he's so... Yes. likes to make fun of i get two or three more patrons so keep going <laughs> kevin brennan <laughs> yeah you. yeah go subscribe we like cardiff go watch subreddit surfing tomorrow night uh with our buddy vinnie paulino by the way vinnie's gonna be on why are you laughing uh this week as well so keep an eye out for that uh, sure just cardiff thank you better buddy. remember it only takes one minute to talk about how much fun you had on this program via Twitter. So I, I expect yeah. to see something. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It only takes a minute. So tweet out how much you love us, Cardiff. Yeah, but I'll wait for the Twitter golden hour. <laughs> Eight hours? Eight hours Cardiff had to tweet. It'll be three days from now. <laughs> yes. I'm just waiting for the algorithm. I'm watching the charts. Once it hits peak uh, you know, visibility, then I will tweet it out. All right. Cardiff, thank you, buddy. Enjoy your Sunday. Galaga. All right, brother. Galaga. <laughs>